uh, meeting of the Health and Economic Development Committee to order. I appreciate your presence, your timely presence. With me are my colleagues Nuri Martinez and just entering the room on cue, Mr. Paul Krikorian. Well, that you did, sir. Uh, colleagues, without any objection, we're going to we're going to take items 4 through 13 on consent. Objections? And that uh, takes us to items 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you read those items in, please? Uh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Is the uh, city clerk would like to make a technical correction to item number 10, which is a city clerk report regarding San Pedro Historic Waterfront BID. The agenda should have read for the year 2014 and not 15. So we would ask your indulgence in approving that, that technical correction. Okay, as that's about to be approved as corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number one is a motion, Martinez O'Farrell, relative to an instruction to the Department of Public Works Bureau of Contract Administration to provide a status report on the city's business inclusion program and to transmit all BIP quarterly reports to council. Item number two is a motion, Krikorian Buscaino Price, relative to an instruction to the Chief Legislative Analyst in consultation with any other necessary city departments to conduct a review of policies adopted by other cities to encourage local manufacturing and make recommendations to increase manufacturing and assist local businesses in the city of Los Angeles. Item number three is a motion, Krikorian Buscaino, relative to an instruction to the CLA with the assistance of the city attorney, CAO, and any other necessary city departments to review the local pref business preference program and make recommendations for changes to more effectively target local businesses and ensure cost effectiveness of the program. Okay, thank you. Um, obviously, the uh, focus of this meeting is on the unique role that small businesses play. Uh, in, uh, in driving our economy. And we want to make sure that uh, we're leveraging these resources in a way that makes sense. You know, the uh, city spends a lot of money on goods and services, and to the extent we can uh, assist local businesses, uh, secure those contracts, provide those services, I think we want to do so. And so uh, certainly the spirit of the um, motions made has been to make sure uh, that we're doing all we can do and we do appreciate that. We're going to take uh, some testimony, uh, comments from the public, uh, and then uh, we'll be prepared to move on these items. Uh, first up, uh, Mr. Gene Hale, African American Chamber of Commerce, followed by Dennis Gleason um, from Joe Bustiano's office, uh, John Truong, Truong, excuse me, uh, from Sage, Dennis Gleason. Oh, same ones. Okay. If you want to make a comment uh, about uh, uh, any programs the city is doing or anything the city should be doing, now is a great time to do so. Just make sure you fill out a card. Mr. Hale. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, my name is Gene Hale. I'm chairman of the uh, Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm here to uh, talk about the small business program, obviously. Um, about five years ago, our chamber did a uh, study uh, across the country which showed that uh, L.A. being one of the most diverse cities in the country had the worst performance of spending uh, dollars with uh, minorities and women-owned businesses. Very dismal. Mayor Antonio uh, Villaraigosa said at the time it was less than uh, 3%. Uh, we believe that uh, the city needs to have the intestinal fortitude to implement new programs that does not violate state law or federal law, and there are many of those programs out there, one being uh, the Services Aid Veteran Program, where uh, the federal government, state of California, LA County, they have a, quote, mandatory 3% contracting participation for construction. We do not have that. We do have, we recommended to uh, uh, Antonio, uh, Barry Ghost at the time that they amend Tom Bradley's, Mayor Bradley's executive order to include the uh, services of a veteran. They did. 
but it was not mandatory. And again, I think that's would help bring us into the 21st century, along with other country, I mean, uh, cities that implement this program. Also, I think that uh, one of the most important things is that you have such a disconnect between the, uh, the city and all its proprietaries that are trying to implement these small business programs. And I think that there should be some sort of a cohesive uh, effort to bring them together so they could expand some of the small business programs they have as well. For example, the airport, they just have a DBE program. But the Department of Water and Power, thanks to Gwen Williams, they have a disabled veterans program, they have a DBE program, and a small business program. So these are the things that we believe that needs to be addressed and addressed immediately. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, honorable members. Dennis Gleason from the Office of Councilmember Joe Buscaino. Um, I thought I'd provide a little bit of background about the situation that prompted us to start looking into local manufacturing as well as our uh, local business preference policy. A couple of years ago, Score Sports, a family-owned business based in Wilmington, bid on a five-year Department of Recreation and Parks contract to provide athletic uniforms and camp t-shirts. Their bid was the second lowest, and it came in just behind a bid from a company located in Carson, just across the LA City border. Both companies qualified for the 8% incentive offered by the city's local business preference program, which was authored by Councilman Krikorian in 2011, because both businesses were based in Los Angeles County. However, Score Sports is a vertically integrated company that actually manufactures their product at their Wilmington facility. They employ almost 300 people and have been in business for nearly 40 years. The Carson company that won the contract provides only a fraction of the number of jobs that Score Sports provides because they manufacture their products in China. This bid process exposed two shortcomings in existing city policy that Councilman Buscaino would like to urge this committee to look into. The first is that the charter only allows the city to provide a specific incentive for businesses located in the state or county, but not specifically for city businesses. And I'll go into that a little bit more on item three. The second is that the city does not provide any incentive to encourage local manufacturing, like many other cities do, such as San Francisco, Chicago, or uh, New York. On behalf of Councilman Buscaino, I'd like to thank Councilman Krikorian for co-presenting this motion with him, and I respectfully request the committee approve this item. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you like me to speak on item three at this time Maybe. as well? So the local business preference program, as I mentioned earlier, was authored by Councilman Krikorian in 2011. It provides an LA County business with an 8% preference in a low bid scenario meaning for the sake of comparing bids, an LA County business's bid would be reduced by 8%, which would improve its chances of being the lowest responsive responsible bidder. In an RFP scenario, the bid would be given a bonus of eight points in the evaluation. This policy has now been in place for three years, so Councilman Krikorian's motion seeking a review of its effectiveness is timely and good policy. When the program was enacted back in 2011, there was a desire by many on the city council to seek a charter amendment to allow the city to provide a city-only incentive. In fact, the council actually adopted an amending motion instructing the city attorney to draft such a charter amendment under council file 11-1673 at its meeting held October 14, 2011. In addition, a number of changes have been suggested through motions such as 11-1673-S1, Motion Cardinus Krikorian, requesting the city attorney, CAO, and CLA report on uh, restrictions that prohibit the use of grant funds for the program. 11-1673-S2, Motion Englander Garcetti Cardinus, which proposes eliminating the $1 million cap on the program and 11-1673-S3 motion Englander Garcetti, which requests the city attorney prepare an ordinance to provide a sales tax credit to local businesses in uh, city procurement contracts. These are some ideas that it may be worthwhile for the CLA to consider their evaluation should this committee approve the motion before you. Another idea that uh, our CD15 team has bounced around would be looking at perhaps providing a graduated preference program. Perhaps a state business could get a 2% preference, a county business could get an additional 2% preference, 
in LA City business on top of that could get an additional 2% preference and then to factory manufacturing perhaps an additional 2% preference on that. Or perhaps the 8% is too high. We don't want to be spending, you know, we don't want to be overpaying for contracts if we can get that same incentive by maybe offering a 4% preference or, or 6% uh, preference. So uh, these are just thoughts to consider. Um, on behalf of Councilman Buscaino, I'd like to say thank you for considering this motion, and he would respectfully request approval of uh, the motion before you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair and members of the committee. Um, my name is John Trong. I'm the coordinator of the South LA Jobs Coalition through SAGE, Strategic Actions for a Just Economy. I'm here to encourage you uh, on item two to include the preservation of industrial land as a part of the study. Uh, so our coalition works with all sorts of folks in the South LA community, low-income folks, non-traditional applicants, people who typically, you know, have been formerly incarcerated, folks who have uh, disabilities and young people to try to place them into jobs in all sectors of the economy uh, that pay good wages. For example, we're getting folks into the USC Village construction jobs as well as into uh, Staples Center as ushers and ticket takers. And so, of course, it's very interesting to us that the committee um, is looking into increasing the amount of manufacturing jobs where we also have a lot of members uh, who are part of SAGE. And so, what I'd really like to recommend is that the committee would look into policies that would basically encourage this manufacturing, uh, the increase in manufacturing jobs, but also make sure that we have sufficient land in order to build those facilities and also maintain those facilities. And so um, that's just something that we'd like the, the committee con to consider and potentially include in the study to better understand how the land use impacts the uh, actual construction of those manufacturing facilities. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, that uh, concludes our public comment, unless there are some other cards out there. No. Uh, there um, members, I know both of you have been uh, very passionate uh, on this subject, uh, as uh, evidenced by your motions. Uh, Councilwoman Martinez, any thoughts, comments? Mr. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, as have you, uh, even from your time in the state legislature when you were a leader on state procurement uh, issues, uh, I think we all recognize that the, there's an incredible opportunity for our city to use its purchasing power to help our small businesses, to stimulate our economy, to create jobs. Mr. Gleason gave a great summary, I think, of all the steps that we've taken to date, but all that we really still need to do to refine this. We've done sort of what we could do, uh, but in order for this to work effectively, there's still much more to do in, in amending the charter and otherwise. When we started, the, there's many ways you can calculate uh, the impacts, but and there's many ways that you can calculate the city's amount of procurement. Uh, but one number that was thrown out uh, at the time we were originally debating this was that this, if the city procures about a billion dollars of goods and services, 85% uh, of that is spent outside of the city of Los Angeles. And um, it's just such a, a wasted opportunity uh, when we have small businesses right here in uh, South LA that could be doing that work instead of sending it to some company in South Dakota. And um, that's, uh, I, I think this is an important step forward to actually refine this policy and to make sure it's as effective as, as we can possibly make it. So I thank you for, for bringing them together today. today. I know, uh, we, I'm sorry, Councilwoman. Oh, is that it? No, no, I was just going to ask uh, staff, I know we've got some, some representatives from uh, uh, Bureau of Contract Administration, CLA, CAO's office, so if you'd like to come up, if you could add anything to the... Just have a quick question. For the comment? Okay. <clears throat> just have a quick question for um, the CLA's office, actually. Is there someone here? CLA's office. CLA's office. Sorry, CLA's office. The question was, what does the city do with regards to public work projects, such as infrastructure or other other, pro other, such as public works and infrastructure projects to support local manufacturing in the city. Um, Specifically like sewer construction projects or uh, utility upgrades, that uh, sort of Paul Smith, CLA. Um, the city has a business inclusion program and then <clears throat> and also includes local business enterprises. 
Uh, there are been, there are preferences given to to businesses based upon the, their category, basically under size. There are discounts. Um, there are preferences uh, that are offered to um, subcontracting firms. Uh, primes get 8% discount. Subcontracting gets 5%. Um, this is managed um, uh, through the Bureau of Contract Administration. Uh, Mr. Reamer is here. He made me give you a more robust feel for what we do, how we outreach, how we um, uh, monitor, uh, what requirements do we uh, impose upon the various contracting agencies. I think you just... Well, would the study or the analysis that we're going to be voting on today, does that also... Would it include looking at this inclusion program to see if we're going yeah, to... Yeah, I, th I think so. But I think what we were looking at, too, is um, programs that are in other jurisdictions. For instance, um, Portland, San Francisco have a, a portion of their business enterprise program that has a set-aside, actually, for, for micro and emergency businesses. So, therefore, you have a value to the of your contracting, and you set aside a percentage of that to smaller emerging businesses to allow them to compete among themselves rather than the larger primes out there. Um, that would be something we probably want to take a look at. There's a term for it. It's, it's a, a sheltered marketplace. I think Mr. Reamer has been looking at this uh, off and on for a while. Uh, we definitely would want to work with his office to to assure that we're covering all the opportunities that may be out there for, for small businesses. Because <clears throat> the small business is really the background of our economy. And sometimes they are at a competitive disadvantage uh, when they come to competitive process. And if we can give them um, some opportunities to emerge uh, as uh, more viable uh, entities, that's good for all of us. What I like, actually would like to see is, are we prioritizing public works projects in targeted areas to support manufacturing? Targeted areas? Targeted areas. My council district, for example, Van Nuys, Panorama City, Sun Valley. That's what I'd like to know. Are we prioritizing these public work projects? These are areas that we've historically been light manufacturing corridors in my district. Are we supporting these small businesses through our public works projects? Does that... Is that clear? Council it's member. clear to me. Okay. John, John Reamer, Bureau of Contract Administration. Um, I certainly uh, commend this, this conversation and, and Council Member Kikorian, um, he raised this many years ago. Um, specifically speaking to your issue, we, we don't have anything that enables the city to accomplish what you raise right now from the standpoint of businesses. And, and that, that is what has, uh, I would argue, prompted this, this deeper look into how effective the ordinance happens to be. We do for workers, and for workers where we have public works construction and we have a project labor agreement, we have in place a local hire um, requirements where we're targeting zip codes, specifically zip codes that we have high unemployment, areas where we, we definitely want to make an impact. And there, there are two words that I will use, one being investment, the other being inclusion. Um, with respect to contractors, um, we have the business inclusion under the executive directive number 14 that the mayor's office is currently examining to see how effective it is with respect to what we want to do. This is a very diverse city, and yet our contracting does not always reflect that. And then more importantly, local businesses. Now, the charter restricts us. It, we have to define local as L.A. County. And as when the ordinance came forward and the frustration was spoken to by the council member um, where he wanted to drill down to city businesses, uh, we weren't able to at that time. And it was clearly communicated that we would have to look into modifying or amending our charter, which is what I'm hearing here today as well. So I, I mean, I'm hearing a unanimous vote here with respect to the investment in the businesses in the city of LA because that will be a means to bring about the inclusion that we should have and it would, I'll, I'll say directly, respond to your, your, your issue, which is those, those manufacturing opportunities <coughs> in, in your district and many of the districts being able to take advantage of our contracts. So I, I would support efforts to go forward. We would work with the CLA and the CAO 
uh, to give whatever data we have. Yeah. Um, we, we have been successful. We have had um, contractors, local businesses working. Um, the uh, example given um, by Mr. Gleason um, is, is a real one, however, and unfortunate, where you have a city of L.A. business and a county of L.A. business both carry the certification of local. And, and that's not what we ultimately wanted to have, as I heard the <laughs> intent of the council. So whatever we can do to support the efforts um, of the CAO and the CLA, we will. There are other um, jurisdictions, San Francisco being one of them, where they, they drill down and they're very specific as it relates to local. And they've even tied in their business inclusion efforts to that, where it's not a good faith effort. Um, as Mr. Hale came up and spoke to, um, we, we have good faith in the sense that it is go out and look, see what you can do to find, but it's not mandated. Part of that is due to the fact that Prop 209 um, does not allow us to focus strictly on gender um, and, and race. Um, however, using local strategically and using small business strategically with the <coughs> proper definitions, um, we believe should help us get closer to what we would like to see in contracting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, San Francisco is um, also a city and county. Yes, it is. So they have that advantage of having that county um, ability to act as a county and as a city, mm -hmm. whereas here we are <coughs> jurisdiction as big as a county, but not a county. Right. I, I do want to speak to the city-county uh, differentiation a little bit because um, as frustrating as an example like uh, the one that Mr. Gleason provided is, um, we, we also do need to keep in mind that even business that goes to our neighboring cities adds to the economic activity of the region. It employs Angelinos. Mm -hmm. um, it's not without, it's certainly not without value. It's very important to keep local businesses going, even if they're not City of Los Angeles businesses. Our city's business, businesses have an additional burden, not least of which is the gross receipts tax and other things that, they, that, that we have to consider when we cost these things out. Um, we also derive greater benefit from uh, businesses within the city than within the county because of local purchasing that, that they make and that their employees make. If they're located in the city, they're going out to lunch and doing the other things that they're doing. They're spending their money within the city, generating sales tax revenues for our general fund and, and so forth. So it's better, certainly, to focus on the city, and we have to move forward with that. Even the county businesses are beneficial to our city's economy and to our, our general fund. Um, Mr. Gleason suggested you know, this graduated rate. I think that, that there's some merit to that, but I would not support giving a preference that affects statewide businesses. Because something that happens in Northern California is of zero benefit to the people of the city of Los Angeles. If it's happening in Vernon, okay, there's benefit there. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit if the business is in Walnut Creek at all. Um, and now to Ms. Martinez's point on, on public works infrastructure and supporting local manufacturing, there is nothing that frustrates me more than walking out of City Hall and seeing at the corner of First and Main a manhole cover that says, City of Los Angeles, made in India. Yep. It is an outrage that we ship, how much does a manhole cover weigh? 80 pounds, 100 pounds? Even with that, manufacturing it, shipping it across the Pacific Ocean in a container, delivering it here, even with all of that, that manhole cover is cheaper than a manhole cover manufactured in the city of Los Angeles. We just have to fix that. Or, or if we can't fix that, then we have to at least give our businesses a fighting chance to compete for that business. Uh, it's, it's just outrageous that we're bring, shipping things halfway across the world that could be manufactured in Ms. Martinez's district or in my district or in Mr. Price's district. Mm -hmm. It's outrageous. Yeah. So I, I think... I, again, applaud our efforts here today, Mr. Price, and I think that um, let's move forward with all deliberate speed. We've waited long enough in, in trying to get these uh, situations. Absolutely. There are a number of uh, you know, important projects being teed up, the convention center, uh, additional transit projects, and so we need to position our, our businesses so they can take advantage. Let me ask you a question, though. Are, are you suggesting that, uh, that businesses aren't doing better because we just aren't enforcing laws on the books? 
or are you saying that we need to put some new laws on the books to make sure that there's greater involvement, greater inclusion? Just generally speaking. <laughs> That's hard to say. That, that's hard to say. Um, the, the law. Well, let me ask you, how is enforcement? I mean, are you satisfied with uh, with our level of enforcement currently, on in terms of of, uh, of uh, making sure that, that small, medium-sized local businesses are you know getting a fair shot of the action? Uh, well, what I can comfortably say, uh, confidently say, is over the past two years, there's been a concerted effort to bring about consistency amongst all the departments, um, working together to unify um, our our. Um, definitions, uh, our certification efforts, um, outreach and enforcement efforts. Um, can our ordinance um, merit some tweaking? Most certainly it can. There are some areas that we, we can and should examine and, and tighten up um, to accomplish our goals. Um, but there is a clear <clears throat> message that has been communicated, um, not just by this council, but certainly by our mayor, um, that there is a commitment to invest in stimulating our local economy. Um, not just for the businesses that are here, but the people who live and work here. And, and from what I've seen in working with the departments, that message has been received loudly and clearly, and there is a concerted effort to make sure that that happens. Well, good. Well, this committee, this committee wants to make sure that we're doing all we can to, to also spread that message loud, uh, loud and clear. Uh, certainly a desire for greater uniformity, um, a desire for uh, making it easier to comply, Mm -hmm. and, and certainly uh, expanding opportunities and enforcing those opportunities. And so uh, we're going to uh, uh, continue to cite it for 90 days, uh, instruct the departments to report back. I hope you'll be doing that in a collaborative kind of way. And also identifying um, um, any kind of, uh, of uh, changes we need to be making in our, in our, in our bylaws, uh, in the, uh, our charter. Uh, to better effectuate uh, the kinds of progress, the kinds of programs that certainly this committee would like to see move forward in advancing uh, small and medium-sized business activity in our city. Yeah. Any, uh, any questions on that? Any, any comments? Uh, on that last point, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, uh, we, we did do a council motion some time ago, I think that Mr. Gleason mentioned on that exact subject about uh, modifying the, the charter. As I sit here today, I'm, I'm actually not sure why that hasn't ad advanced. Was, is that at the city attorney's office? Because, because if so, then maybe this committee should just instruct the city attorney to bring back a proposed revision to the charter. I mean, is, is there something that's, that's holding that up? Uh, yes, I was going to speak on item one and two. I only spoke on one, so I'll just be brief here, but just two minutes here. I think the question you raised is a good question. Uh, what What is really happening here? Do we have the the laws on the books to enforce these things? During the study that I referred to earlier uh, by our chamber, uh, the uh, empirical data stated that uh, cities or municipalities that had more stringent rules that were uh, enforceable, those are the ones that made the goals. Those are the ones where you had the most participation. And I submit to you that uh, we don't really have to look too far to amend, uh, to make changes, because I think we can simply go back to uh, Tom Brad Mayor Tom Bradley's executive order for small business and look at some of the recommendations our chamber made that was not enforced, and then just amend the executive order to include some of the programs that uh, that we know can bring about better results. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you for your comments. Uh, so then without further ado, we're going to, uh, further objection, we're going to continue these items, these three items for 90 days, uh, and ask to report back uh, on the issues that have been raised uh, in the uh, in the motions and in, in our comments this afternoon. Okay. The objection, that will be the order. Is there any more business uh, before this committee? Uh, that concludes the agenda. Okay, without uh, any objection, this meeting is adjourned.